Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace, and today is Monday, September 14th. I literally just looked and I forgot within the span of less than a minute. Um, this is a podcast about knitting, books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day. If you like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there. I have things that I posted about today on Monday, and um, I'm gonna talk about them. You're gonna see them on Wednesday, so maybe it's slightly out of date, but that's okay, because this thing is not getting started for a while, and I bet you can probably guess what it is, because I'm very excited about it. Um, <laughs> we talked about it last week, if you're looking for a hint. Um, show notes, things to, that I will be talking about hopefully will be in the show notes, which are on my blog. Um, if you are interested in that, um, that'll be linked down below if you're on YouTube or if you're on my blog every, all, at, blah, 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 if you're on my blog already, everything should already be there. Um, I have knitting to show you. I have quite, it's been quite an adventurous week in regards to my knitting, you know, and um, I've got quite a lot done. Um, it's also been a very long day. <sighs> that was a very deep sigh. This is not intro material, this is actual podcast material. So, without further ado, if you like to grab something tasty to drink, something to snack upon, something to craft upon, an animal to snuggle, laundry to fold, if you're working out, you're not working out, um, preparing dinner, baking, doing anything, multitasking, or just relaxing, fully in support of that, um, <laughs> go back and join me for some crafty chat. I have an iced coffee with pumpkin spice creamer. It's so good. It's been a busy day, everybody. Busy, busy. I will say, like, you know those days where you have so much to do on your to-do list and somehow it just continues growing um, without you really realizing it and you're just like, oh, I forgot I had to do this too. I forgot to, I had to do that. I forgot that this took way more steps than I thought it would. Normally on Monday, I have a pretty busy day anyway, but <laughs> I lose steam kind of like around two or three, um, shortly or around the time where I record. Um, I'm recording much later today. It's almost 4.30. Um, because I've been so busy, but also today I was very successful in that almost everything, once this podcast is done, uh, I only have one thing left on my to-do list. Um, and also because I did not really sit down until now. <laughs> I am very tired and very happy to be sitting down. And I know that in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that bad. But I'm tired and I'm ready to talk about some yarn with you. So, um... I have a finished object. I have so close to a finished object. I tried, again, I tried really hard. Um, you may uh, be aware kind of what I'm discussing. You know I'm discussing with myself to a camera. Um, but you, I mean, we're, it's you I'm talking to. Um, on the other side of the screen. Um, last week I talked about how I had really tried, I had high hopes of um, finishing both sleeves of a particular test knit that I'm working on. That did not happen and I really wanted it to and I tried, I tried, it did not happen. Um, that happened again but with a different sweater and I like so close. So close. It's probably at like 97, 98% done and couldn't get it done because I was really tired last night. 
and we were already up past our bedtime because we were watching the Gilmore Girls, you know, as you do, and yeah. So that has nothing to do with this sweater that I'm about to show you, which is my finished object of the week, which is very wonderful. There will be another one for next week, of course, because this other sweater is getting done. Um, this is um, a test knit that I am doing for, or I did, because it's done. It does need to be blocked. Um, for Annie of This Bird Knits, it is a top-down, colorwork yoked sweater. Um, there is a high-low back, and it doesn't really look like it, but there is, I do promise. And then the sleeves are done. It's all finished and everybody I have said this a bazillion times and will continue to say it because of what I'm about to tell you is just proving the point that the second sleeve always goes faster um, this first sleeve took like more than a week maybe a week if I'm being generous, probably more than a week. The second sleeve took an afternoon and an evening. Um, which is like, I'm frustrated with myself, but I'm also proud of myself. I don't know, maybe this is weird. <laughs> I'm frustrated in that it took me so long, so long to get done with that first sleeve. Why could I not just power through and get it done. Why? I don't know, but I just couldn't. <laughs> and then when I finished it and I started the second one, like it was like, bam, 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 I'm done. What? We were watching more Gilmore Girls. It was great. <laughs> but so I'm I'm irritated that it's taken me so long to like why do why do I have to go through the process of finishing the first sleeve to be really speedy with my sleeve knitting, right? Like, why can't I just go ahead and be speedy for both sleeves? <laughs> Wouldn't that be really nice? I would really appreciate that. Um, but that is not the case. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to be happy with the fact that it may take me more than a week to finish one sleeve it's literally nothing on the sleeve. It's a plain sleeve. Some decreases. Actually, no, there weren't even any de any decre any decreases on this sleeve. I'm thinking about the other sweater. There were. It was just a plain, plain sleeve. Nothing was going on, and it took me so long, and then it took me so short to knit the other one. <laughs> Such is life, you know. Such is life. Hi, I'm trying to record. I know it's much later in the day, but please, can we keep the sound low? Um, so, I'm very happy with this. Um, I have tried it on. fits very nicely. It will fit even better once it's blocked. That's very important. Um, this, I'm way ahead of schedule, which is wonderful. I'm so excited. So I can actually work on my last and currently a final test knit. Um, there were, there have been two that I've seen that I was very excited about. I'm gonna talk about those in just a moment. But, um, yarn information, excuse me, excuse me, please. Um, is the brown, which is Cascade 220, and then the contrasting color is some very old hand spun, which I am very pleased with how it looks. Um, both are old stash, which is great. Doing some intense stash busting with, excuse me, with this sweater and also with other projects that are coming up. I'm very excited about that. Actually, two big projects that are coming up. Um, or two projects that I'm, one, I, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. I got distracted. So this is done. Hallelujah. We can move on to, let's, I haven't worked on this at all. I do apologize. Um, 
Um, not that I need to apologize, but I could have had more knitting content, but I didn't. Because I've been working on other things. But this is the um, Mabry pullover that I am testing for Rachel of September Knits. And Absence makes the heart grow fonder. I have um, just, I love this so much. I have my purple gummy bear from Hand Stitch Life on here, which is just also making me happy. It's currently on a Scooby, which are these little guys. It's a plastic things that you can buy on Amazon in packs of a thousand or something insane for very little. That's actually, um, you use these to braid friendship bracelets and other such things like keychains, but um, they are the perfect waste yarn because um, they are hollow so you can um, stick your knitting needle in the tip of it and just slide those stitches right back on and you don't have to pick them up it's so nice um, a friend taught me that and she learned that from Julie Knits in Paris I believe I could be wrong but I believe that's who she learned that from. Um, anyway, they come in lots of fun colors. Clearly I have a purple one, I've got a green one, I've got an orange one, I've got a bazillion and a, ooh, we have an avalanche of yarn. Let's put those down there. This is um, Barocco Vintage DK in the Chana Dal, Chana Dal colorway, and then the uh, contrasting color is two yarns held together. It is, um, <clears throat> Malbria Rios in the glitter colorway, and that is also, um, I'm holding it together with, um, or I held it together with past tense because it is done, the boucle from Hedgehog. So, very happy with how this has turned out. I don't believe there is any color work on the sleeves. I know there's not any more on the body, but I don't know if there's any more on the sleeves. Anyway, I'm just in stocking it, knitting in the round heaven right now, or will be once it gets put back on the needles. Um, once the other one for any of this bird knits got finished, or like that was my priority, um, it was clapped in, then this one, and then the um, Mabry is now going to be worked on. So let's, um, go back to the fact that there are potentially two test knits that I'm very interested in doing, but I don't know. I'm not going to do one of them. I don't know about the other one. Um, I actually don't even remember who posted one of them, which is the one that I'm actually interested in doing, or could do. <laughs> That's a bit problematic, you know? If you don't have the information saved, kind of makes it tricky to follow up and get more information. Um, also, uh, Andrea Mowry just posted a testing call for one of her upcoming sweaters and oh my goodness, it is the most beautiful, the most stunning. Ugh. And I really, really, really want to do it, but I looked, it, I had seen it or it had been up for an hour, the post had been up for an hour, and like pretty much everybody was selecting the range of three sizes that I could potentially do. So I thought that my chances were pretty low and it was really okay in the end. I mentioned it to Sam and he was like, but you don't need any more distance. <laughs> That's okay, you can knit it when it comes out. And I was like, but I want to knit it first. And he was like, well, that's okay, you can still knit it when the pattern comes out. It's very supportive, very kind. I know he's just looking out for me and I know in the end he is right that I need to stop. <laughs> um, and that's okay, you know, it's, um, I have done so much testing this year, it is crazy to even think about the things that I've test knit, because I don't even remember half of them. That's why we um, have documenting um, things so we can see <laughs> pictures of what we have done, because we can't remember in the moment. Um, 
I know I've done a lot of sweaters. I do know that and I know there's a lot more to come which is very exciting. It's only September. We still have many months left. Many months worth of sweater knitting time and shawl time because you know what? The exciting thing that I'm not going to talk about yet but my phone is just buzzing like crazy. I must check this. Um, so both test knits have been discussed. I have no more test knits currently. Um, I really should need to stay, no. I really need to just stop. Um, but, so if you uh, watched last week's episode, you would know that my mom and I are casting on, um, or cast on, a um, chunky Aaron Waite sweater that we were going to do. It was very spontaneous. Um, we were going to do it together when we were hanging out um, at my parents' house for Labor Day, um, which was really wonderful. We had so much fun. Uh, pool time was had. It was great. We had pizza. We played some games. And my mom and I went to cast on and discovered that our needle size was too big. And um, it was too big for me, and my mom knits looser than I do, and so it was going to be way too big for her. And which was very disappointing because uh, unprepared me, I did not bring um, multiple sizes. I didn't even think that the needle size would be a problem, so I was not prepared. And we did not cast on, unfortunately. I did knit a gauge, gauge swatch because my mom had a set of needles that I needed or could potentially use size-wise, and um, so I knit a gauge swatch and then ripped it out. So casting on didn't technically happen together, but then... When we got home that night, um, I cast on, she cast on, and the, so that was on Monday. And let me show you. Here's my sweater. Um, so as we can see, I so like when I say 97, 98%, I really do mean it. I know that it looks like half a sleeve, but I really this part of the sleeve will take me probably about 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, like can we even look at those cables? This is such a fun knit. Everyone should make one. It is the best. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to make it with one skein of Cascade Eco Wool, which is kind of crazy. Um, I was not expecting that. Um, it is the Grace Pullover Sweater by Denise Bayron, and, um, yes, it is wonderful. Uh, the pattern called for size 13, but because Cascade Eco Wool is a little bit more on the lighter side of bulky, um, since it's more of an iron weight, um, we had to go down in the size, so we're knitting it on an 11, or I'm knitting it on 11. Um, except for these, these technically might be a 13 because they were the smaller circumference for the sleeve, but that's okay. We know we like, we can't, can't be picky. Um, this is just a basic raglan, um, pullover. It's got kind of like a little, a mock turtleneck almost. It's got a very high neck and we've got these beautiful cables that go all the way down into the ribbing on the bottom which is super fun. We also have um, some uh, sleeve shaping, which is pretty cool. It kind of creates a dolman effect, which I am quite the fan. And um, I'm done with all my shaping on this sleeve, so it's literally just knitting in the round. Again, probably will take me about 20 minutes. Um, so this is getting done this evening, and I will have another finished sweater! Um, this got done so quickly and I could have gotten it done even more quickly if I wasn't working on other things or if just you know regular life wasn't going on and is that even necessary can we just slow our roll please um 
we live by a busy street. If you were not aware, it's a busy street. <laughs> um, so yeah, just general, general life things like getting your groceries and or picking up your groceries or whatever from curbside, which is really, really wonderful. We don't have to brave the actual grocery store. Um, general stuff, life, laundry, the kitty litter, cleaning the bathrooms, cleaning, <laughs> you know, life stuff. I don't need to go through the list. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so, a week is really good, just in general. But I know it could have been less than a week. Um, so if you're looking for an instant gratification sweater, or if you're looking for something that you are, it's not like a huge time commitment, and you can wear heavy sweaters a lot of the time, and you are wanting to do that, or even if you can't, and you just want to, more power to you. This is the sweater for you. This is really incredible. Her directions are very clear. They're very well written. She has um, tutorials linked to everything that she talks about in the pattern itself. So if you have, um, it wasn't working on my Kindle, but I think it's just because of how things get formatted and whatever, but it works on like computers, iPads, iPhones, um, other Android phones, whatever you're looking at it on. Um, like you can just click on the link to her tutorial and it'll take her to a YouTube, or it'll take you to a YouTube video of her demonstrating the technique, which is so wonderful. I think it's really incredible when designers go that extra mile and they record the tutorial themselves. Like, it's one thing for people to include the tutorial in their pattern. That is huge and very wonderful and greatly appreciated. But when they actually make their own tutorial for you to watch to see specifically how they want it done or how it should be done in the pattern or how they like how they do it themselves that's so cool like that's just it feels like more of like a personal one-on-one -on -one lesson of like okay well I can cable without a cable needle but now I know how Denise does it and that's super cool and I learned something new it's great would definitely make another one of these. So my mom is knitting hers is this beautiful like gray white with flecks of darker brown and it is so beautiful. I can't wait to see what it looks like. But yeah, I can't wait to wear this. It's going to be amazing. It's also cropped and I love cropped things so much. If you're new to the podcast, I love cropped things, and I love pizza, and I have a cat who's orange. Um, <laughs> random facts about me, you know? Um, so this was not expected. I was not really planning on um, having this much progress. I mean, I knew that it would go quickly, but I didn't know it would be like, oh, bam, hello, I have a whole new front finished letter to show you for next week. This is so amazing. Um, I am definitely not complaining at all. Um, this will be done by next week. This will be done this evening. Um, but you won't see it until next week, unless you see a picture on Instagram, which will probably happen. So, um loving this. You need to make one. It's amazing. Such a well-written pattern. I can foresee myself making many more, which is very exciting. So, Grace Pullover by Denise Bayron. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, going on the same vein of the incredible designer that is Denise Bayron, she is hosting um, the Moving Forward Knit Along that is going on, uh, I think, for five weeks. It started this past Friday, um, which, uh, yes, I honestly can't remember what date that was, and I want to make sure I get that right. The 11th. Um, it started at 7, she's hosting, oh dang it, I just took a screenshot. Do you ever do that where you're like trying to like put your phone to sleep and you take a screenshot 
that's the worst. I hate when I do that. <laughs> Side note. Anyway, uh, Denise is hosting Zoom meetings that um, I know that you can go and like hang out. I believe they are meeting on Friday. All this information will be is on her Instagram um, of like just knit along information. But she had a really beautiful um, way of thinking about this particular wrap that she designed um, about a year ago. Um, I'll link the, the video and her Instagram in the show notes for you to go watch and just hear her talk about it. But she explained that this design was put to, or she designed it when there was a lot of like uncertainty and not great things going on in her life. And so it was, that's why it's called the moving forward wrap. It's in the shape of an arrow, it's pointing forward. And then also she goes on to say that it's, that it's not um, overlooking or um, downplaying anything that has gone on this year or happened to anybody or people that we have lost, but we're moving forward and we're honoring them and we are um, honoring the good things that have happened this year, which I think is really incredible. And so I am also partaking also because I was feeling super spontaneous and was like, I'm gonna cast this on. I'm gonna be a participant. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I need another cast on? I don't know, but I think it would be fun. So, everybody, it is a fingering weight wide um, scarf thing. Um, it is a scarf. It's very wide. It's in the shape of an arrow, so it's pointy on one end and it's got a little. Um, arrowy thing on the other end. That's very badly explained. <laughs> Hopefully you know what I mean. It looks like a chevron type thing. <laughs> I could also pull up a picture. That would probably be very helpful. Um, why didn't I do that to begin with? So it is fingering weight. And here we go. This is her picture. Let's see. There we go. And so it's got some like lace texture. This is what I was talking about. So it's pointy on this one end and then it goes inwards. Oh, I'm backwards. Inwards on the other side. <laughs> Technical words, descriptions, you know. Um, she is having yarn prizes, which is very exciting. She's got a lot of really um, amazing people lined up, which is really cool. I'm glad that she's been getting such incredible support and uh, just a response to this knit along. I think it's kind of what we all are excited and wanting to do is just kind of move forward, but in a respectful way. And... Um, so yeah, this, it, like I said, this is a fingering weight shawl. It is a bigger shawl, so the yardage is quite a lot. And the fingering weight um, yarn that I have that is in that yardage, I personally would per prefer to save for sweaters. So what I did, and I know a lot of other people are doing as well, I have several friends doing this, is you make it scrappy. We're kind of using some Stephen West techniques here in just having a massive bag of yarns and colors in this color palette and I'm just going to grab whatever I feel like and knit with it. And that's just kind of what all I'm doing. Um, I have a wonderful massive bag which is from the GFW Yarn Crawl that was from last year? Two years ago? Uh, there's a date on here, two, 2018, so two years ago. This was given to me by a dear friend of mine, um, and I haven't seen her in a while, but she gave that to me, and she also, I did not plan it this way, but I'm actually also using a little stitch marker that she also gave me, um, this little guy. But this is all that I have so far. It's very... I'm not putting pressure on myself to be like, we got to stay on track with the schedule that is put together for the knit-along. 
because no. <laughs> um, I'm just taking my sweet little time. I'm just gonna have fun. Um, I like that with scarves, obviously, the stitch count doesn't change or it shouldn't change um, unless that's part of the design or an accident happened and you might have decreased too many times or increased too many times, which has happened to me on quite a few occasions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yes, the stitch count is not going to change, which means that the rows are going to stay kind of consistent. Um, I say kind of, they should remain consistent. <laughs> that is the goal. Um, and then obviously there's like eyelet lace that will be in different forms throughout the whole shawl scarf. My phone is blowing up. I do apologize. I feel like I should put it on do not really. Excuse me, everybody. Um, so it is chevron. Like I said, we have the arrow here. And I just have, I posted a picture of this on my Instagram as well. I showed kind of the color palette that I have. It's a lot of these warm browns. I've got a couple of dark browns and this creamy white. I have a more pinky. Um, I have this from my powder and dust shawl, which crazy to think that I finished that this year. That seems like forever ago. I also have this which is bison from Knit Picks. I also have leftover bits from my Clapton sweater, which is Merlot, which I love this color. It is just stunning. Um, I've got, I'm currently working with the Drops Alpaca. I think that's, I think I have another one in here with like the actual ball band. It's the one with the llama on it, or the alpaca, excuse me. It's not a llama, it literally says alpaca. <laughs> shows you how much I pay attention to detail. <laughs> um, but this is what I'm working with. This is super old stash. I don't even remember when I got this. Um, but I like that it has a llama on it. I don't even know if they still had the llama on their ball bands for the alpaca mix. 100% 100% alpaca. So it's so nice. Um, I have a random ball of drops flora in there. I have bits of my Space Ash, which is also from my Clapton and some other things. Here's some uh, Stroll Tweed from Knit Picks that I think will be very nice. Um, I'm also working from this little leftover bit of um, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which I just love the texture of this. It's so nice. And I know there's other yarns that are similar, but I just... Every time I knit with a yarn that is similar to that to this or with this exactly, it's just like ah, I love how like rustic it is. I just love it so much. Um, what else do I have in here? This is Brindle Heather from Knit Picks. So it's very there's nothing like super super special in here. There's some more gray flora. I don't even know what this is, but it match the color palette. <laughs> um, so yeah, my goal is just to have a good old time and I think to have fun with these colors. I'm really excited about these, this like muted, neutrally palette that I've put together. It seems just very calming and very relaxing, especially these two colors together. It just brings me much joy. I have no idea how I'm going to be striping things. I have no idea if I'm going to like fade things, if I'm going to do, I don't even know. I'm just playing around and hopefully it'll work out. <laughs> um, so moving forward, knit along. I would highly recommend checking out the information if you want to join. Um, it's just really wonderful and Denise is really great. She's very kind and um, a wonderful designer so I would highly highly recommend checking out her other patterns as well. So next up
I've got two more things that I want to talk about. And one thing is probably going to take longer than the other. Um, let's talk about the shorter thing, but not less important because this is very important to share because it's absolutely wonderful and that is you will be able to knit by the end of this book by my friend Rosie Fletcher. Um, she owns a yarn store in London and it is truly amazing. I have never been there unfortunately but I do have yarn from her shop and I have objects that I have knit with the yarn from her shop and it's really wonderful. I have known Rosie and her sister Jessica for a very long time, like high school, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> we have a wonderful friendship that has been created over the internet thanks to Twitter, podcasts, and Instagram. Um, but she has written a book which is really, really incredible. It basically is just learning how to knit. Um, and then a lot of really great patterns in here, like the angle scarf. I really want to knit because it just seems like a really good stash buster. Look at that. How beautiful is that? It's stunning. For sure want to knit that. There are beautiful things like um, a tablet case you can knit. They're very simple projects. A doorstop you can knit. A chunky hat with a pom-pom. We all need chunky hats with pom-poms, you know. There we go. Um, then there's mug cozies. There's color block cushion covers, which is very fun. Reusable face wipes. How awesome is that? Um... A chunky scarf. I know there's also there's a little there's little baby booties in here somewhere that are so cute. Baby shoes. Can we even? Are those just so cute? Um, very simple. A mitered square blanket, textured cushion cover, slouchy beanie. The teddy, which I, like, I don't make very many stuffed animals, um, but now that I have a nephew who loves stuffed animals, I have made more, and this just seems perfect. Like, it's so cute. <laughs> it is absolutely adorable. Um, uh, there's also a shopping bag in here, and just a lot of really, really good information. Um, the, the instructions are just so clearly written, but it's also, I don't know if it's just because I live in America, but just, and Rosie lives in England, but just because of the fact of that fact, just the British writing, or just like the way that she words things, she's a very good writer, she's a very good, um, she's very eloquent, she's a good speaker. Um, and so it's just very like, ah, this is just a really cozy book. I really like this. So if you already know how to knit, that's okay. But also there are really great patterns in here. If you know someone who wants to learn how to knit, this would be perfect. This would be really amazing. Um, so there are 15 projects in here, which um, kind of went through those a little bit. And yeah, you can, um, if you follow the steps in this book, you should be able to knit everything that is in this book, which is really wonderful. Um, I would highly recommend checking out this book. Um, also, her yarn store shop website, Slip Stitch. Um, I know that she is doing all the online orders and stuff like there's just very clear information of just like how to pick up drop stitches putting stitches the right way right way round which I know when I learned how to knit picking up drop stitches was very scary twist stitches, stitches was very scary yeah just this whole like the section called troubleshooting is really nice how to count your rows from the knit side and the purl side 
how to use stitch markers to help with that. If you have an extra stitch, what do you do? How do you undo your work? Color work, alternating colors. We've just, it's just a beautiful book. It's just really wonderful. And it's um, very well photographed. The pictures are very nice. If anything, it would also be a very nice coffee table book. And then it'll be a nice conversation starter. Because people be like, oh, can I knit by the end of this book? And then you can say, yes, you can. It is a wonderful book. So Rosie knit this book. It is wonderful. She is wonderful. You should check it out for sure for the wannabe knitter in your life. Or maybe you don't know how to knit yourself. Um, yes, would highly recommend. So next up and finally, ooh, everybody, it's the most wonderful time of the year which is the West Knits Mystery Knit Along of 2020. That's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> I was so excited about this earlier today, which we'll find out why, but I, Sam was doing something in the kitchen and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And I sang, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And I was like, can you guess what it is? Cause I had just, like, I had just talked about it like earlier that morning and then I talked about it yesterday as well so he knew that it was kind of coming but because I sang a Christmas song he thought it was Christmas or it had to do with Hallmark Christmas movies which would also be the most wonderful time of the year but this is really the most wonderful time of the year <laughs> one of the most wonderful times of the year so um I can't remember the name of this thing. I keep trying to remember and I can't remember. Um, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. Can I slip stravaganza? Slip stravaganza. Um, that is what it is called and the informational came out today which I was hoping would come out um, it worked out that I recorded later anyway but it's also helpful that it did come out so we can discuss I um, pulled all my yarn <laughs> that I possibly could want to look at and uh, have been playing around with combinations pretty much all day whenever I get a spare moment while things are baking or cooking or I don't know. Um, so I, I'm going to show you two options. I have narrowed everything down to two options and I really am, I'm leaning more towards one than the other but I really do love both of them for different reasons. So we know that it will take five skeins of yarn which is a poop ton of yarn. Um, it will also take two skeins of one color that is our main color. Um, so that was my limiting factor. I only had two colors that I had two skeins of, which is fine because I happen to love both of them and they went with pretty much everything. Um, so that was very handy. And then the other three, there were some guidelines of having a light, a medium, and a dark. There were some guidelines of trying to stick to solid, semi-solid, and lightly speckled yarns. So that was really helpful, but the fact that these, the other three, are basically giving you the ability to take those special skeins, take those fun colors that you want to play around with, and stick them in this place of the Mystery Knit Along of 2020, Slip Stravaganza, um, just is really wonderful. And I think I have not had this much fun... Like, I was really excited to put these colors together. 
the past several years have always been kind of like I don't know what I'm gonna pick I don't I don't I don't know I don't know I'm excited but I'm also kind of hesitant and I'm a little nervous that what I pick is not gonna work out but for some reason I don't know why but this year I think I'm just like I love these colors these are skeins that I have collected and I've saved over the years and now they're all gonna be put together into something that is beautiful and I am so excited I just can't wait to we get to cast on it's so exciting so um, that is the yarn information so for my main color I will be using lamb string yarn in the relax it's just magic colorway this is on her Sadie singles it's a beautiful beautiful dark navy with bits of purple bits of black different shades of blue it is stunning so this is my main color option one would be next up would be this hedgehog fibers can I hold all of them in together Next up would be my um, peanut butter and jelly from La Bien Aime. That would be, that is a special skein. That is a special skein indeed. And next up would be my Uncommon Thread Golden Praline. Which these two, the Golden Praline and the Peanut Butter and Jelly were meant to go together in another project. Um, and have been for forever, but I am more interested in using whatever I can for this mystery knit along. I want the mystery knit along more than I wanted this shawl for these two. But if they can stick together, then that's maybe awesome. I love this. I think this is really, really great. I love the, the pop of the purple, and I love the autumnalness of this golden praline color. And then the, obviously the neutral is always good. This is option one. So option two would be basically the same thing except switching out peanut butter and jelly for rose gold from Chelsea Lux. And that would be this. Which I love so much. I love the pinky tones. I love the autumnal vibes, colors. I love both of them for different reasons. I love that this is um, seemingly more something that I would be drawn towards. Granted, we all know I love bright colors. I love knitting with bright colors. I am not afraid to knit with bright colors. Um, which might make you think, well, of course, why would you go, like, go with the purple? But I love these two colors together. This rose gold next to the golden praline plus this very muted gray brown and then the blue. Like this is a color palette that I would not have expected that I would have loved but I love it so much. So as a refresher peanut butter and jelly and I love the, the peanut butter and jelly because it is that bright pop of color. I love that the bright pop of color would be more West Knits esque ish. What? <laughs> be more like a West Knit shawl. What would Stephen West do? Probably do a pop of color. But I think I'm really, and this is, this doesn't look as blue in person looking much more blue on camera. It is way more warm toned. It's more pinky and they're, the bits of orange are way more apparent, which blends it in with this color. My hands are really getting to work out. They're not happy. There we go. I really like this one. I don't know. So what do you think? Do you think go with more me colors or go with the me colors that are more bright? <laughs> me colors with a pop. It's not looking quite the same on the camera. That's very unfortunate, but 
there will probably be pictures. My plan is I have taken nice pictures where the lighting is really good of both of these color combinations and they are most likely going to be up on my Instagram for this episode. So if you would like to let me know what you think and you want to see these colors better, um, better lighting, whatever, um, head over to my Instagram and you'll see a picture or pictures there, which um, if you have any um, opinions or feedback or anything about that, I would love that. I love getting opinions. Um, really leaning towards the rose gold. But I don't know. Because it, it really just, it really does make me happy. Like, can we even... I really like this. I will not wear a sweater out of these colors. I just really love this color, 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 color palette. Stumbled over those words for some reason. And you know what? Everyone, all of this is stash. So, there is nothing wrong with having a big stash. There is nothing wrong with saving yarns and you don't know what to do with them. You're just trying to figure out what they could go into, what projects they would make, whatever, because then stuff like this rolls around and I don't have to buy any yarn. <laughs> I already bought it all. <laughs> Um, I don't have to wait for it to arrive in the mail. I don't have to worry about it getting lost or being delivered to a different mailbox because that happens often. Um, it's all right here. All I have to do is wind it up, uh, which will be an adventure. Um, so yes, this is very exciting. I believe Clue One comes out October 1st. I believe, goodness gracious, 18 text messages. What is going on? Oh man, there's another one. Mm. Mm. Where would I find this? That's not it. I don't know. I believe it starts on October 1st. So, everyone, let me know what you think. Please do. I um, feel pretty set in what I want to do, but also I keep looking at this purple. And, like, it's really not showing up very well. This is more accurate, but it's still pretty blue on camera. Um, and it's much more pink in person. So, um... Check my Instagram, look at those pictures, then let me know. Leaning towards the rose gold, I really think that would bring me joy. Um, not that peanut butter and jelly wouldn't, because it definitely would, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that's coming up, which is very exciting. I am so excited. I, like I said last time, I don't even know how many times, how many years I have been doing this. I have been doing this for so many years and I just love that this is still a thing and is still continuing on, it's still a tradition and um, it's just a worldwide knit along and it's something that everybody gets excited for which is really exciting um, and I love getting to be a part of that. I love getting to see what other people put together. I love getting to see other people's combos. All the pictures today that I keep seeing on my Instagram feed, most of them were color combinations, asking opinions, needing feedback, and it's just, it's just so much fun. We're all doing this together, and um, it's the most wonderful time of the year, in my opinion. One of the mo one most wonderful times of year. So that will be happening in October. I hope to focus on cleaning off my needles. Clearing off, I shouldn't say cleaning off because I'm not like cleaning them necessarily. 
Um, but just clearing off my needles, making sure that things are ready to go, making sure I have my sixes available. Um, is that what that is what I will be using? Um, finishing up test knits, making sure I don't get any more. I might. I don't know. I really shouldn't. I really shouldn't. So yeah, that is, um, there's just a lot of projects that I have going that I am feeling really good about. I feel like being able to finish the gray sweater in about a week has been really amazing for my knitting mojo. Also getting the other one finished because it was pretty slumpy for a while. It was not, my knitting mojo is pretty low, but that I think it's picking back up. So that's really exciting and I hope to pull more languishing whips back into my rotation and just um, move forward with all the things and be very excited and then we can cast on Mystery Knit Along in October. In October. I'm so excited. Are you so excited? Because I am so excited. That is all that I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble and rant and rave and get excited about knitting events. Um, are you excited about knitting events? If you're not, that's totally fine. But if you are, I would love to be excited together. <laughs> um, social medias, show notes... All that stuff will be on my blog, which will be linked down below if you're on YouTube and you know where my blog is. Um, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. Obviously, I have lots of crafty plans. We're moving forward with all the things. I need to look at my languishing whips and other current projects that are going on, like my wool and honey sweater. That might be go into rot rotation after the grace pullover is finished. I don't know. Who knows? Possibilities, possibilities. We'll find out next week. I might have figured it out by next week. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um. Yes. Thanks for hanging out. I know there are lots of other podcasts out there that are much less rambly and way more put together than I am, but I appreciate that you hang out with me and you spend time with me, you take time out of your day um, to listen to me ramble um, and laugh at my own jokes because I think I'm funny. <laughs> Sometimes I am, not always, <laughs> but I still laugh at my own jokes, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, again, let me know what you think about my Mystery Need Along colors on Instagram. Please let me know. I would love some feedback. I have some votes already, but the more the merrier. You know, it's kind of divided right now. The rose gold versus the purple. Which is also making me very divided because I just, I just don't know. But I really like the rose gold. Anyway, we've already discussed this. I can talk in circles for the rest of forever about this. But is there anything else to say? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think there's anything more to say. So with that, thank you for watching, hanging out with me, and all that jazz. I will see you guys next week.